Hello and welcome. It is Wednesday today, so that can mean only one thing. It is our Wellness Wednesday webcast with the lovely Luxie. And today she will be giving us hints and tips on keeping moving during the day and why it is so important for us. Now over to you, Luxie. Afternoon, everyone. Um, so today we're going to revisit a topic that we did touch upon at the start of the series, but I think it's something that, given it's um, now summer and it's something that's definitely worth a lot more attention. So it's all about getting moving. So how exactly can we try to move a bit more, um, sit a little less, um, and exactly what the benefits of this are? So um, just to start off with it's sort of a loose agenda, um, we'll start by discussing what exactly are the health benefits of moving and exercise. Um, how much physical activity we should all be aiming for um, and then looking at some top tips to get yourself moving. And then finally, um, sharing some resources for where to actually start if you are looking for inspiration or would like to know where to begin with any of this. So to start with, if we were to look at what exactly are some of the health benefits? So hopefully none of this should come as a surprise, but Physical activity has been associated with helping a number of different health and lifestyle conditions and helping reduce the risk of developing such conditions like heart disease, type 2 diabetes, stroke, etc. Um, it can help with maintaining a healthy weight. So not necessarily if you're looking to lose excess weight, but if you're actually trying to maintain a healthy fitness level for yourself, it can in fact help. Um, and one of the most important ones, um, a stronger musculoskeletal system. So your stronger bones, your muscles, um, definitely moving more and being more active can help. Um, and then the associated psychological benefits and improving your sleep quality. So these are all things that can help definitely be improved by moving a little more and actually putting some kind of activity into your daily lives. Um, and then moving on to what exactly are, I suppose, the physical activity guidelines um, and actually how many of us do actually do this during our sort of daily lifestyle or across the week. So the government advice is to aim for 150 minutes of moderate intensity activity a week or 75 minutes of vigorous intensity activity a week. So this completely varies. Um, so this is something like going for a run, cycling, um, jogging, taking part in sports. Um, so any kind of games, sport activities, and then trying to incorporate strength training on at least two days during the week. So this is ideally to aim at keeping your muscles, bones and joints strong. And as we age, it's more vital as we're more susceptible to fracturing bones quite quickly and um, incurring sprains. So this is why incorporating strength training is very important. And then finally, one that unfortunately as a nation we're all very guilty of and quite poor at doing so, which is trying to reduce long periods of sitting down with some activity. Um, so this is where if you are spending the vast majority of your day seated, um, trying to break this up and whether that includes moving about every sort of 30 minutes or so, or even just trying to incorporate really simple things into your day so that by the time it gets to the end of the day, you're not sort of looking at your sort of step count thinking you've barely moved. Um, so it might seem quite ambitious looking at all of that in terms of times, but approximately sort of speaking, you're looking at 30 minutes of activity a day for the week. So when you put it into that, it's probably not much to expect 30 minutes and it equally um, that can be broken up. So even bouts of sort of 10 minutes um, all count and as and when you can fit that in. So if you're able to do all of that across two days, that's absolutely fine. But we would suggest it's better to sort of break that up across the week where you can to make sure you are moving consistently. Um, so looking at some top tips, I guess, on what are some of the key things you can try to focus on to try and make sure you can get moving. Um, some of the ones I'd say would be firstly trying to make lasting habits. So setting reminders. This is quite a useful one um, to move every 30 minutes or so. So whether um, if you're sat at work or even if you're sat at home, um, trying to set a reminder, perhaps on your phone um, every 30 minutes, timing that perhaps with um, getting a, yourself um, a drink, so getting some water, topping up your hydration levels. And um, that's one way in which to do it to make sure it's actually something quite sustainable and you will continue with that behaviour. Um, moving at lunch, so that's quite a key one just because it adds into your day. So um, whether this be only going out for a brisk 10 minute walk, which is fine, um, but actually how can you get moving more over your lunch break? And that means 
trying to actually take one as well. So if you are sort of glued to your screen or you're glued to work, trying to actually take some time out um, and trying to get some movement in. Another really important one I'd say would be finding something you enjoy. Um, so it's all good and well committing to a number of different classes or signing up on all the different activities out there. But unless it's something you find that you'll enjoy, um, it's probably something that won't last. So perhaps trying a variety of different activities, sports and um, virtual classes and actually finding what exactly you enjoy with it um, and which one you would actually like to stick to. Um, and then reducing periods of sitting. So um, really simple things such as if you are sort of sat on the, the sofa all the time or you're sat on the sofa watching a movie or any TV um, shows, perhaps every time there's an ad break, for example, just walking around or standing. Um, trying to incorporate those little um, periods where you can get some movement and um, tracking your progress and setting goals. So this is probably, I would say, really important if you're someone who doesn't move much and is looking to make some long term lifestyle changes and um, setting targets and trying to progress in this is something that definitely helps. So having goals in mind of what you're looking to achieve and exactly how much progress you've made. So quite easy to see how far you've come when you've sort of committed to perhaps even a month of trying to incorporate going for a 30 minute walk every day. And you might you'll probably find that it'll get easier as you continue, but actually that way you can set more ambitious goals. So um, more intensity for certain challenges or exercises that you might be doing. And then finally, keeping it simple. So trying not to overachieve, I suppose, is one of the biggest things, um, especially when you're trying something new, um, a new challenge, a new sport. Um, trying not to overdo it. Um, it's very easy to do to think you're starting something new, you think you're, you're, you're more than capable of doing, but if it's a new activity and it's something quite intense too that your body is not used to, it's worth just taking a step back and just putting it down simply of trying to um, start off small. I'd suggest starting off small and then slowly um, increase and you know incrementally you can increase the intensity or um, the frequency in which um, you do the classes or any kind of activity you've incorporated but I think keeping it simple will help you make that into a long lasting behavior change as opposed to something that you try for the first um, month or so and then it completely drops off the radar but I think at this stage it'd be great to find out I guess if there's any questions or any activities that anyone else would like to share that they've tried that they haven't done before? Yes, James. Um, so uh, one of the questions uh, that we've had in was around um, getting a bit of help from apps or uh, online resource. Like what, what's a good activity tracker to start with if you're kind of starting out and need some assistance with that kind of thing? Yeah, no, absolutely. Great question. Um, I think there's so many different sort of fitness app trackers out there at the moment, um, but Fitbit's quite a good one. Um, I would say even there's a number of different NHS resources available as well called Active 10, um, and that's a great way to sort of keep on top of if you're going out for walks, exactly how often you do these, the timings, etc. Um, but yeah, a whole host. So My Fitness Pal is another good one, which also looks at not just your activity, but also a holistic approach to health. So you can also um, log in the your diet consumption, because as we know, um, movement is one part of a really big um, overall holistic um, model. So looking at your diet, your sleep, and you're able to sort of track all of those elements. Um, and also Sport England have a massive number of apps and basically have summarised um, a compare and contrast, if you like, of all the sort of free um, fitness activity apps that are out there as well as different programs that you can start. So it's worth having a look on there where you can actually have a look at what sports are available and what you can actually start doing right now. Nice. Sounds like it's pretty comprehensive. No, absolutely it is. I think one of the other things that um, I was just going to say was um, if you're, there seems to be a lot of studies at the moment around how movement as a kind of your constant movement is actually more beneficial for your general kind of long long term health than kind of really intense activities. I know you kind of touched on it there, but something as simple as as gardening and I don't know getting up like you say and, and just kind of walking to the shops or getting up at a getting off at a bus stop earlier than you should get off seems to be kind of a real trend that's being pushed. And yeah, no, I think you're completely right, and it's. I think those are the, probably the activities that will come across as very seamless and probably won't even feel it, it to most people as 
um, counting towards your soil activity levels um, as per the recommendations, but they absolutely do. So like you said, um, gardening can actually be quite strenuous. So doing those types of easy activities, carrying even things such as heavy shopping bags, um, all count towards sort of that strength training and helping your muscles and bones. So um, trying to, I, I would say absolutely, trying to incorporate it where it doesn't feel like you're going out of your way to do something and it actually is incorporated quite easily into your daily lifestyle. So like you say, um, whether that means getting off the bus early or parking further in the car park, if you've got, if you drive into work, for example, and walking a little further into the office, um, things such as that can certainly help. Um, I think we had another question. Yes, Steph. What do you do to keep active? What are your, your main go-tos? Yeah, no, um, good question. So um, I would say I'm definitely guilty, like many of us, in terms of where I do have bad days too, where if I'm completely swamped, it's very hard to sort of get in um, steps. But when I can, I do try to go running. Um, it's something I um, I was sort of been running for the past five, six years. So I find it quite um, a nice release. Um, I definitely find it helps sort of my mental health, just getting fresh air, um, getting a bit of a break I'd say but also I always find it helps me sort of set me up for the day so a morning run usually helps my concentration levels um, for the rest of the day and my productivity. Um, I do enjoy um, doing um, sort of activity aerobics classes so like a body combat class or a body attack class um, like James did mention those are quite high intensity so I know when I did first start them um, definitely did feel challenging but quite easily different variations of that so also trying to combine lots of different um, sort of YouTube videos, which I do use on the days that I do struggle to um, go out and get my activity where I need. So anything ranging from like a five to 10 minute YouTube video um, sort of on abs or any kind of sort of upper arm strengthening, toning, I do try to incorporate. And I do find that helps where like many of us, where you struggle for time and it sort of comes towards maybe midday or so when you realise I haven't actually done much. Um, so I, I do like to try and sort of slot those into my day, um, especially when I have busy ones, um, to just get some kind of activity and definitely walking um, where I can. I do try to. One of the biggest things I do when I'm on calls, I suppose, where I don't need to be um, looking at the screen itself, I try and walk when I'm on phone calls. So when I'm taking calls, just put my headphones in and walk around the room or the house um, just to make sure I'm just um, walking and standing. Um, but I know there are other alternatives. People, I'm um, not sure whether anyone has actually tried this, but there are sort of standing desks that I know a lot of people have invested in over this period um, where, like, like we say, if you are sort of eight hours in the day sat down, a standing desk is actually a really good option. And perhaps it's something you sort of alternate, maybe a couple hours standing and then you sit. But not sure if either of you have sort of heard of that. Yes, James. Yeah, I was just going to say that was going to be my next question, because that's the thing at work, the feature that I miss the most is having that ability to just stand up and you feel like you're doing exercise, even though you're literally stationary. It's a really nice kind of way of just breaking up and getting stretching out your back and yeah, just f feeling like you're being active. No, absolutely. And I think that I think there's actually been quite a lot of um, research actually into that area because it's something that's growing um, kind of that conventional desk setup and actually looking at what exactly are the benefits and like you touched upon James um, for your sort of musculoskeletal system because um, like your posture your back and the spine and so many different benefits it can have from sort of standing and helping to align that posture so I think it's definitely one to watch and I imagine there's probably going to be more people investing in that and can quite see that growing um, especially depending on what your sort of work situation looks like for the next sort of six months to a year and how you can incorporate that and um, yes what what's the kind of what do you recommend as a kind of form of exercise for those of us that spend a lot of time hunched over the desk particularly if you're at a desk like kitchen table that's not really designed at the right height mm -hmm. for us what kind of exercises or kind of types of exercise should we be doing yeah no really good question um i think mobility based is probably best for those types of situations so um even trying to get in your sort of cardio is great so if you are going for walking that that will absolutely help but perhaps more mobility focus so that's focusing more on sort of your upper back your shoulders your spine and almost things such as um yoga pilates to help strengthen um those sort of areas and your core and um, because a lot of that like you say um different work setup environments if you are finding you're naturally sort of hunching and um, you haven't got that right adequate setup absolutely you will definitely probably start to experience um, back neck shoulder pains and a lot of that is just trying to focus on um, things like yoga pilates any kind of strength training um, and it's not to say you have to sort of 
you know, sit through an hour long session. And there's so many different variations now that vary from sort of something as short as 10 to 15 minute sessions that you can easily find on YouTube and quite easily follow. Um, and perhaps that's something to try and do. Probably I'd suggest it's all about repetition. So trying to fit that every day is probably where you'll see more success um, than it's if it's something you do one off. So it's more about frequency, especially with these types of um, activities and how best you can in fact incorporate them. Um, I have got, um, I think we've got on the next slide, just a couple of resources that are quite useful. Um, I'd say to sort of start off with, um, if you are looking for that information, some apps that are also quite useful that you can sort of download. Um, so people may have heard of the um, From Couch to 5K app. Um, it's definitely grown in popularity and ideally it's for any sort of um, skill based beginners, essentially for beginners who if you haven't really done any running and um, haven't really done a lot of movement. It's a very guided program um, that gradually increases you to get to the 5K, but it's over a period of time um, and definitely appreciates having sort of no um, sort of activity levels beforehand. Um, so definitely quite a useful app. Um, there's also Sport England that I mentioned. There's also quite an interesting one called the Active Partnerships um, and this is um, applies to England. So where if you're looking for within your community, I suppose, of if there's any sporting activities or anything you can get involved in, um, even things like gardening projects, etc. Um, you can actually go in, go onto this website, put in um, the actual sort of county or town you're from and it brings up all the different sort of initiatives that are going on and how you can actually get involved. So things such as like allotments, um, planting, growing in the local community, like um, you mentioned, James, all of these are things that actually contribute and you can easily sort of incorporate that within your weekend plans or as and wherever um, and quite a nice sort of community outreach program that you probably may not have even knew existed sort of in your local area. So definitely worth having a little Google to see what's actually available in your local area. Um, and then the NHS website has a number of videos for strength and flex plans, like we discussed, um, lots of really quick videos that you can actually stick to. I think we have possibly another question. I was going to ask, uh, it's just a silly question really, but obviously in the Far East, uh, particularly in China, there's kind of state sponsored movement, isn't there? Like in the morning people get up and they practice Tai Chi or they practice forms of um, uh, yoga. Can you ever do you think that's something like in this country, we obviously have a huge problem with lethargy and, you know, um, there's problems with obesity and problems with um, health and wellness in general. Do you think that's something that should be encouraged? Do you think that the NHS should bring out a, a, a kind of similar routine? Joe Wicks has had a go um, for kids, yeah. but us adults need a bit of motivation too. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, no, absolutely. I think you're completely right. I think when we do look um, look across the globe, you're completely right. It's it's almost it's it's the culture. It's very much ingrained of how exactly people incorporate that. Um, like you say, lots of organisations where actually that's how they first start off their mornings um, across their workplaces. And it's just almost considered the norm, whereas it would be amazing to sort of get to that stage here as a nation. I think we've definitely got a lot more work to do to um, education is probably part of it, but I think it's also um, trying to get that availability of where, depending on areas in which you live, where is that accessibility to some of these activities, um, some of the classes, a lot of, I guess, from affordability perspective too. Um, and I think it's also trying to break down that barrier of, we're not saying you need to join a gym, it's not about that. There's so many different things you can do in the comfort of your own homes um, and actually how can you best incorporate it. But no, I think it'd be amazing if we could get to um, a place like that. And I think there's lots of companies who already have kind of taken their custom, um, their employees sorry, on that journey. And I think many more will invest in the health and wellness of their own employees. Um, so I think watch this space. There'll probably be lots coming about of actually perhaps even a new sort of team session to start off your team meetings of a little bit of a bit of a yoga in the morning instead, perhaps. Um, be interesting. I think, like you said, it will depend on uptake. And I think doing it as a team probably has a bit more of a unity. So will help almost from that team bonding perspective too um, and team building. But yeah, I completely agree. I think it'll be great to see. Maybe RA could uh, lead the way there, eh, hey, Steph? Absolutely. No, I'd agree. Definitely. I think it'd be great to see. Um, but no, yeah. I think if that's all the questions, um, we'll share the resources. And yeah, no, absolutely. I think it's a conversation that I know will probably come to time and time again. Um, but yeah, just whatever ways you can try to get moving, and hopefully a bit of inspiration to think about getting some movement in later this evening for everyone um, watching. Fantastic Lexi, thank you so much. I know 
I'm that's definitely given me the inspiration to do my next run for Couch of 5K. So thank you so much for that. Um, that's all from us today. So thank you for joining. Meanwhile, if you have more information, um, for more information, I should say, about our program of discussions, please go to RA Group's website at www.ragroup.co.uk forward slash news to download the broadcast links. Meanwhile, if you have any questions or suggestions about how you can get involved, please do email datgavin.hoodie at ragroup.co.uk. Thank you for joining us today. Have a fantastic afternoon. We hope you get moving and we'll see you next week, same time, same place.